Hello and welcome back to Animal Based In Your Face with Scott and Pam. Today we're going to be making a white sauce zucchini lasagna out of the Carnivore Code cookbook by Dr. Paul Saladino. Let's go over the ingredients you're going to need for this recipe today. Before we get started, I did double the ingredients in the recipe, but I did make one simple change that we'll talk about later. We're gonna start with four medium zucchini, two tablespoons of softened butter, two teaspoons of salt. For the white sauce ingredients, you're going to need eight teaspoons of unflavored gelatin. We get this from Amazon. A half a cup of water. Four ounces of cream cheese, we use Philadelphia. A half a cup of heavy cream. We use the organic Simple Truth, it has no carrageenan. And you're also going to need two large egg yolks. For the meat sauce, you're going to need two pounds of ground beef. Now this is organic grass fed. The original recipe does call for three pounds if you double it. We're only gonna do two pounds in this recipe. If you want to do three, you can, but I would rather have like a small piece of this white sauce zucchini lasagna and then add a steak if I wanna add more protein. But if you just want to follow the exact recipe and you're doubling it, then you would need three pounds. You're also going to need for the meat sauce, one cup of beef stock, a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, four tablespoons of oregano, four tablespoons of basil, two tablespoons of rosemary, two tablespoons of thyme, and a half a teaspoon of salt. The ingredients you're going to need for the ricotta filling are four large eggs that will be lightly beaten, one cup of ricotta cheese, two tablespoons of parsley, one cup of mozzarella cheese grated, and a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Yes, this is a lot of ingredients with several different steps, but it is so worth it. And this is why I choose to double this recipe for meal prep. So I can make ahead a big pan and freeze it for dinners. Let's get started putting all of these ingredients together. First, you're gonna take your four medium zucchini and you're gonna cut the ends off and then dispose of them in the trash. Once the ends are cut off, you're going to need to thinly slice your zucchini for your lasagna noodles. Now, I do mine a little bit different. Instead of getting into slicing them lengthways um, thin, I'm actually gonna put them in my food processor and I'm gonna grate them. If you want to take your skins off, you can. I choose not to. These are organic zucchini, so I'm going to go ahead and leave them on. If you're going to make lasagna noodles, go ahead and slice them very thin now. And if not, put them in a food processor and grate them like me. To shred my zucchini, I'm going to use my Brevel food processor and I'm using the large shredding side on my shredding blade. There's a fine and a large. I'm gonna put the top on. Now this food processor, you can either feed the zucchini through the lid or you can take off the chute. Most of my zucchini will fit in here, so that's the way I'm gonna be feeding it today. Put my zucchini in, press the start button, and it automatically feeds. I'm gonna do this with all four of my zucchini. Once 
once you have your zucchini shredded or if you're slicing it, you wanna go ahead and put it on paper towels. Now I'm using a pan just to keep it cleaner and I've double layered it with paper towels. Next, I'm gonna spread all the zucchini out in a single layer on the sheet pan. Once your zucchini is laid out on a sheet pan or on your paper towel, you can go ahead and take your two teaspoons of salt and sprinkle over the top of your zucchini. It will start to sweat in about 10 minutes, so you just wanna let it sit there and start sweating. And then once it starts to sweat, you wanna take additional paper towels and blot off the excess moisture. We're just trying to draw some of the water out of the zucchini before we start making the lasagna. Now, if I wasn't videoing, I would honestly just go ahead and take my grinder salt shaker and I would just cover the zucchini really good in salt. But just for less confusion, I went ahead and used the four teaspoons that we allotted for for the recipe. Now I can see that this is already starting to sweat and it's probably been a minute. Can you see that? So let it sit there for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna start blotting the excess moisture off with a paper towel. We're gonna go ahead and start working on our white sauce while the zucchini is sitting. So you're gonna need a small bowl. And first you're gonna take your half a cup of water, dump it in your bowl, and then you're gonna sprinkle your eight teaspoons of gelatin over the top. I'm gonna grab a whisk and just mix this just a little bit. It's already starting to thicken. And we're gonna let this sit for five minutes. While our gelatin is sitting, we're gonna go ahead and get a small saucepan and put our cream cheese in it and a half a cup of our heavy whipping cream. I have mine over a low heat. Now we do have a burner that cooks faster than others and it's this one. And I'm using an induction cooktop, just in case you're wondering. And we're gonna let this cream cheese and heavy cream get soft and melt. Next, I'm checking on my zucchini. It's sweating a lot. It's been almost 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some paper towels and start blotting off the excess moisture. As you can see, there is lots of moisture coming out of the zucchini, and that is why we're doing it. It helps our lasagna not be watery. When I'm taking my paper towel off my shredded zucchini, I just pull it back really slow, and if you do that, then it doesn't tend to stick. You might get a few here and there, but that's it. Now that our zucchini is done, I came over to check on our cream cheese and heavy cream mixture and it's totally melted. Once it's totally melted and it's been about five minutes, you're gonna take your gelatin and water mixture and you're gonna combine it with your white sauce and make sure it's combined really well. I just wanted to show you what it looks like, how that gelatin just thickens up that water. Next, I'm just gonna combine it really well. Now that gelatin is solid, so I'm just gonna leave it on the heat for a few minutes and let it thicken up. And just keep combining it. Once the gelatin is combined really well with the white sauce, you're gonna pull out a half a cup and you're gonna add it to your two yolks that are lightly beaten into a very small bowl. Next, you're gonna mix that well. 
Once a half a cup of the cheese mixture is mixed well with your egg yolk, you're gonna return it to the saucepan. Now for two minutes, you're gonna constantly whisk or stir the egg yolk white sauce mixture with the additional white sauce mixture that was left in your saucepan. After two minutes, and it's on a really low heat of constantly stirring it, then we're gonna remove it from the heat and it will start to thicken. It's been two minutes, so I'm gonna remove this from the heat, and then we're gonna start working on our meat sauce while that is cooling. I have my two pounds of organic grass-fed beef. It's already been thawed, and I have it in a skillet to start browning. I do love to use a meat chopper when I'm doing ground beef or making taco meat, or I want my ground beef really fine, and that's what I'm gonna be using today. So let's go ahead and get our ground beef browned. I have mine on a medium heat on an induction cooktop. While our meat is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get a small bowl and start mixing together our ingredients for our ricotta cheese filling. To start our ricotta cheese filling, first we're gonna take our four large eggs, put them in a bowl and lightly beat them. All right, four eggs. Grab the different whisk. I'm gonna lightly beat these eggs. Now that my eggs are lightly beaten, I'm gonna add my one cup of ricotta cheese. Next, we're gonna add two tablespoons of parsley to the mixture. One and two, and mix well. Now this is combined well for our ricotta filling. We're gonna check on the ground beef. My hamburger is almost totally brown. As you can see, I finally chopped it. That's why I love my meat chopper. Once this is done, we're gonna turn down the heat so we can add in our ingredients. Now that our ground beef is done, we're gonna go ahead and then start adding our ingredients. Now, I did not drain this because we're animal-based. We wanna keep the fat in the ground beef instead of draining it. So next, you're gonna take your one cup of beef stock and you're gonna add it to your ground beef in the pan. Next, you're gonna add your half a cup of cider vinegar. Next, I'm gonna add my four tablespoons of oregano. Next, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of basil. Now, let me remind you, I only did two pounds of ground beef instead of three. So if you wanna cut back a tablespoon on your oregano and a tablespoon on your basil, you can do that because we're not doing the full amount of ground beef in this recipe. Next, we're gonna add two tablespoons of rosemary and two tablespoons of thyme. And if you wanna cut back one tablespoon, if you only did two pounds of ground beef, you can. Now that the rosemary and thyme have been added, I'm going to add my half a teaspoon of salt. And once again, you can half this if you choose to, if you're only using two pounds of ground beef versus three. Next, we're gonna combine and stir all the spices in the meat sauce. Once it's combined really well, you're gonna turn your heat up just until it starts boiling, and then you're gonna turn it down and let it simmer until all the liquids evaporate. Now that our ground beef mixture is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down and let it simmer. 
And once all the liquid is almost evaporated, then I'll remove it from the heat. While our ground beef mixture is simmering, I was gonna tell you, when you don't double this like we are today, it's made in an eight by eight pan. But since I've chose to double it, today I'm gonna to use a 14 by five by 11 by two inches. So 14.5 by 11 by two size pan. I've never doubled it before. I have made it many times just like the regular recipe, but today I'm doubling it, so I'm hoping it's gonna fit well in this size pan. To prepare our pan before we start layering our lasagna, I'm gonna go ahead and use the two tablespoons of butter and grease my pan to get it ready. I don't know how you like to grease yours with butter, but I like to use my little silicone brush that way I can get the sides and stuff super easy. So go ahead and prepare your pan. Now that our pan is prepared, you're gonna go ahead and take your zucchini and put a third of it in the bottom of your pan. If you did zucchini noodles instead of shredding it like mine, go ahead and just do a third of them and if they need to overlap a little bit, that's okay. Okay, so this happens when you're doing live videos and you're preparing recipes and you're doubling it and you haven't normally done that before. I went ahead and downsized my pan to a 13 by nine. The other one was just gonna be too big. So I'm going with it and here we go. I just wanted to show you why you do not want to skip the step with putting the salt on your zucchini and letting it set. This is the paper towels that were doubled my zucchini was sitting on. Now, if you did not do that step, you would have a super watery um, zucchini lasagna. So that is why we did that. Okay, I've put a third of my zucchini in the bottom of my pan. And next, we're gonna go check on our meat sauce to see if the water has evaporated. And there's still quite a bit of water, so I'm going to let it simmer a little bit longer. Next, we're going to take half of our meat sauce and put it on top of our third of zucchini in the bottom of our pan. Next, we're going to take half of the ricotta filling and put it over our first meat layer. Next, I'm gonna take half of my white sauce and put it over the mixture. Now that half of the white sauce is on, we're gonna do half of our mozzarella. So we started with the cup. We're gonna do about half a cup over this layer. Now, if you love cheese, of course, you can do a little bit more. That is a half a cup of mozzarella. And next, we're just gonna repeat the exact same layers that we just did. So I'm gonna take half of the zucchini that I have left and put another layer on. While we finish layering our lasagna, let's go ahead and preheat our oven to 325 degrees. Once you've repeated your layers, Go ahead and put the rest of your zucchini on top of your lasagna. And after that, you'll do a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. Now that our cheese is on top, it is ready to go into the oven. What we wanna do is put a layer of aluminum foil over the top before we bake it. Our oven is preheated. We're gonna stick it in the oven for 45 minutes. And at 45 minutes, we're not done yet. We'll be back. The timer went off, it's been 45 minutes. So next we're going to remove the aluminum foil from the pan. We're gonna put it back in the oven and we're gonna increase the oven temperature to 375. We're gonna let 
it cook another 15 to 20 minutes until it's lightly browned and the zucchini is cooked through. It's been 15 minutes. Woo! We're going to take a look at our zucchini. It's starting to brown. I'm going to give it five more minutes and then I'm going to pull it out. Just remember all that high heat is helping to dry out the water and the juice in the lasagna so it's not so watery. It's been 20 minutes. Let's look at our zucchini white sauce lasagna. It's browning really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. It's out of the oven. Look how good that looks. We're gonna let this cool for five minutes. Once you let it cool for five minutes, you can go ahead and cut it up and serve it. But what we're gonna do is actually cut this into eight servings. And then I'm gonna put it in containers and we're going to put it in the refrigerator, probably a couple for this week and then the rest in the freezer for meal prep. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Please let me know in the comments if you make it and what you think. Be sure to follow us on Animal Based In Your Face on YouTube for more great recipes and find us on Facebook at Animal Based In Your Face Tribe. Until next time.